Hello, I'm James Harvey, the Professor of Music Theory at the College of Southern Nevada with 5-Minute Music Theory. We're going to talk about a specific kind of a, an authentic cadence. If you remember in the past video, the authentic cadence is a cadence which has two chords, the first performing a dominant function followed by one that performs a tonic function. So that's the AC portion of this. We're going to talk in this video about a PAC, which is the perfect authentic cadence. I don't need to put authentic cadence because we already talked about that. So the perfect authentic cadence is actually the strongest and most conclusive of all of the cadences. And I'm gonna show you an example of a PAC. And I'll actually probably refer to them as, a, as PACs. It's a little bit of a messy, grand staff, but you know what I mean. So a PAC, let's do one in C major. A PAC is a dominant triad, specifically a dominant chord, it can have a seventh or be a triad, into a tonic. Both must be in root position. And I'm gonna list a few things over here. So it's always dominant, potential seventh to tonic. Both chords are in root position. And then there's one other thing about this and that's the first scale degree in the soprano of the tonic chord. So I'm gonna show you an example of that. If all three of these are taking place, you're looking at a PAC. So we're gonna do a dominant chord, and we may as well do a dominant seventh just to spice things up a little bit. And I'll do G, D, and we'll go B and F. So that's our dominant seventh. And I have two, chord, two notes that I must resolve appropriately. Since my leading tone is in the upper voice, I need to resolve that up to one because that's our tendency tone. And then we have a seventh in the alto, which needs to resolve down here. The bass is going to be a C. And then what's remaining is a G. I don't have a place for the G. So here's where we can do that little trick where you can triple the root as long as you have a third. And you can do this, by the way, in the last tonic chord, but I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to revoice this just a little bit and make this work better. So I don't even have to worry about that. How about let's put the B here and then we'll do F and then that leaves us with the D. The F still needs to resolve down to an E. And then we do have a place for the G here and the C and that looks a lot better. The other one we could have gotten to work, but this way we have a full chord. And I always, I always strive to try to have full triads and seventh chords when possible. So we have a dominant seventh in root position to a tonic in root position. And then that's that criteria number three, criterion number three is this. Notice that the first scale degree is taking place in the tonic chord of this cadence. That is really important because if that doesn't take place, even if the first two criteria are met, it's not a PAC. The next few videos, we're gonna cover uh, the imperfect authentic cadences of which there are three types. There's only one type of PAC. And again, the PAC, perfect authentic cadence, the A and the C are authentic cadence, which means that it's some sort of a dominant uh, function into some sort of a tr uh, tonic function. And the P, the perfect part of that, it, the reason it's perfect is this is the strongest type of cadence. And in a PAC, it's specifically a dominant triad or seventh chord, so specifically a dominant chord to a tonic chord both in root position with the first scale degree in the soprano of the tonic chord. That's a little bit of a mouthful and a little bit to remember, but it's really important that we do remember that because all three of those need to take place when writing and looking at perfect authentic cadences. Thank you.